We, we, we interrupt our program with a special bulletin. Uh, all right, first question. Very easy. All right, first question. In your day-to-day -day lives, do you use violence to solve your personal problems? No. Probably. Probably. <laughs> all, right, all right. Like it would be not like 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 to slap her. All right. So she... so so it would be violence would be defined as placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice, right? I rape, murder, theft, and assault. Oh, no. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can have playful, you know, yeah, yeah. things yeah. with each other, like okay. with siblings, right? Boxing's consent, right? right? Let's agree to the rules. No ear body my tising, nothing below the waist, right? Yeah. And then we can box, right? That's consensual. Yeah. All right, so the second question would be, with the exception of self-defense of yourself and others, would you consider it then wrong and immoral to initiate that force? Yeah. All right, and then the last question would be, would you also consider it wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, like, of course. Yeah. Like, no, no, I was thinking, I, was, hmm. I just want to, yeah. I got some that. people on mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, perfect. Right. All right, so just tell me your day to day lives. You have a plurality of non violent solutions. You apply and use to solve your problems, right? You have this uh, personal moral integrity against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, though, we're taught the only way we can affect any kind of change or make any difference, though, is through government, through politics, through voting, they say, right? So people vote with their ideas, opinions, and preferences, and how best to solve that community problem. And in effect, you elect a politician, right? Mm -hmm. That politician, his or early job is to legislate those ideas and opinions then into law. Mm -hmm. And then those laws of opinions are then backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. Where you can take government opinion that cannabis is bad for everyone, mm -hmm. right? If I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown to a cage, a prison. And was any point of refuse to resist because I don't agree with that opinion and try to escape or run away, I'd be met with more violence or sometimes shot to murder, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. At the same time, government is to be confronted through more violence, though, because at no point can you say, I do want to help the poor. Right, but I don't want to fund war. Yeah. Right, you have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give government your property. You still have to give up your money. You still have to pay your taxes, because if you did have a freedom of economic choice and how best to spend your own money, how best to allocate your own resources, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is how this organization then called government is immoral, and that this organization then only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way. And that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality, the plurality of nonviolence solutions that us three already share. Mm -hmm. What wow. do you think of that? I think you're spot on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've always had this, like the way I like to phrase it is like, I have my rights and then you have your rights. And as long as you don't infringe on my rights and I don't infringe on your rights, like we're good. We're good, right? We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can do whatever you want with your rights as long as they don't affect mine. Right. And so... Uh, I think that really connects with like everything you just said. Yeah, absolutely. So like <laughs> under, under government, they'll say that's not your house because you owe us property taxes. That's not your <laughs> land because they're eminent domain. We could take it any time. They'll say that's not your body, and they'll force like uterus ultrasounds, right? If you want to, uh -huh. you know, get an abortion, for example, right? Yeah. Or if you want to use uh, any kind of chemical uh, on your own body or ingested, right? Mm -hmm. In a free society, so that's coherent. That's the way government works and a free society based on consent, then you have thousands of free societies based on your, your preferences, based on your choices. So now you can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street, not, that's not. But in all these societies though, there's real respect for body ownership. Mm -hmm. There's real respect for property rights, right? That's your clothes, that is your camera, right? That is your house, that's your car, that is your money, right? Uh, so no one, there will never be any cohesive interactions, right? Yeah. Uh, with government, there's no contractual relationship, right? You can't show me a contract with government. Yeah. Right, but uh -huh. you could show me a contract with Netflix, with AT&T, uh -huh. with uh, with Hulu, or you know, um, mortgages or whatnot. Right, mm -hmm. that's consensual. Like, oh, yeah, I like the terms and the uh, the terms and agreements here. I I consent to the uh, consequences. Right, and the, mm -hmm. the, the my responsibilities that are outlined. Right, yeah. great, I'm good to go. Right, mm -hmm. in a market though, you have a lot of people competing to offer you the same thing. Mm -hmm. Under government, is only theirs. Right, yeah. you have no freedom to cancel and subscribe. You say, you know what, I don't like your service of security, right? I don't like uh, what you're providing me. Can I cancel and subscribe? They'll say no. Well, can I compete entrepreneurially to say I could provide you a better service that's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer, and they'll still say no, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't like competition, right? right? It has to be only the government's way, and anyone who competes, they'll say, well, that's illegal and criminal. It's like why uh, it's illegal, for example, for anyone to compete against the post office. The post office has a monopoly in delivering a First class mail, pieces of paper. This is why FedEx, UPS, uh, DHL can only deliver packages. Yeah. They want to get in the market, but the government says you are not allowed to compete against us. Wow. Right. I hadn't even thought of that. Right? I mean, uh, so that's why, like, when you see, like, the post office boxes, UPS, they take care of the private property, right? FedEx, look at the uh, UPS box, you know? I mean, USPS is, like, rusted. It's broken down, right? It's... Uh -huh. You go in their post office, they remove the clock so you don't know how long you've been waiting in line. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's, that's government for you, right? Right. Wow. 
So, like, you started off talking about violence. Do you connect that? Like, how do you define immorality? Because I guess I was expecting you to... Not saying that this yeah, is yeah, right. Yeah, I'm yeah. just... I was expecting that to go a different direction, right, I guess. Yeah. I'm just trying to see how you connect, like, violence and immorality. Because as someone who, like, has a very deep interest in, like, history and whatnot, I've um, read books that really make me think about situations and circumstances under which um, violence can change one's morality and can just alter a society's like perception of what is moral and what's not. So I just, I right, guess right, I'm right. like no, that, wondering how you make that. Okay, like, yeah, I, I think that's a very good question, yeah. which is why like I don't say, I want to start off the bat and say this is moral yeah, or immoral, yeah, yeah. right? I actually, what do you consider, right? Do you consider mm -hmm. it wrong and immoral right. in your day-to-day -day lives? And, and I find that universally a majority of people agree that yeah. they don't use violence in their day-to-day lives they find that to initiate it is wrong right. and to force their opinions using uh threats of force is wrong too right yeah so that's i guess what the first two questions convey I'm asking right. you what you what you consider to Define be immoral us. right so right. you've defined it already yeah right so you've defined it that it's wrong and immoral to initiate force mm -hmm. it's wrong and immoral to violate first ideas um it's wrong and immoral to violate consent right right and these are all the same areas in which government is founded on. Yeah. Violating consent, forcing ideas, yeah. right? Using violence to get their way. Yeah. Uh, so that's where the connection yeah. comes, okay. right? I get that part. Right. So like in the air, because the thing is, uh, government has done a good job hiding that violence from yeah. us, right? They use different language. They'll say yeah. it's wrong for you to steal, but we'll call it taxes, right? <laughs> right? They'll say like, uh, they'll say it's wrong for you to murder, but we'll call it organized war, right? right. When there's like terrorist attacks, when s someone foreign does it, but when the United States government does it, we call it collateral damage, right? Uh -huh. Drone bobbing families and um, weddings overseas, right? So that's different language because they don't want you to universalize and see it for what it is, right? They have to hide it and mask it. Okay, that um, makes sense, yeah. Right? So, so I think it's very important to have these conversations because yeah. I don't want to be misled or tricked into uh, violating my moral values, right? right? I want to I, I want to live a consistent moral life, right? A yeah. virtuous life, right? But the last thing the government wants is that consistency because they're based on inconsistencies there. The language right. is inconsistent, right? Um, the whole thing is founded on that. So if everyone, every, everyone knew the truth, then you, they'd realize they never need a government that it, you know, tr has been tricking everyone to go against their moral values. And then we'd create instead a real society that doesn't have politicians dictating your life. It doesn't have strangers telling you what you can and cannot do with your body. We'd have a real society that, that could be prosperous, that's rich and diverse with all these different interests that has, finally, though, real respect for each other, though, like you were mentioning, right? Yeah. yeah. Respect for each other's way of life, right? Exactly. Um, and that's that's what I want, right? That's the future okay. that, I, that I want uh, to see, uh, that I want to live in. Awesome. And, I'd uh, love to see that, too. Right? <laughs> that, that sounds great. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so the organization I'm with is called Liberate RVA. Mm -hmm. uh, liberate us from tyranny, right? Okay. Um, so it's non-political. So it has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with the Democratic, Republican, or the Libertarian Party. I mean, we find that, uh, you know, the fact that we were born as uh, tax slaves, as you were, right? Like, when you were born, you never gave consent for Social Security, but they use you as collateral to fund it, right? And when it's time to retire, there'll be nothing left for you, mm -hmm. right? But so it's the idea that babies can get consent. Come on now, right? Yeah. So, uh, so this is a, an organization that seeks to abolish government by just ostracizing it, just creating our own community, a peaceful society that respects each other, right? Mm -hmm. And then from within, from Richmond, one day we can grow large enough to have that free society, and we can just ignore government away and it'll just disappear, mm -hmm. right? Wow. So there's nothing about violence or anything, it's just removing your consent, right? Your participation in that system. So like in theory, you think like, like a society, I guess under anarchy would be Yes, right. Okay. So anarchy means uh, without rulers, right. right? In this context, political rulers, like yeah. or a stranger dictating what you can and cannot do with your life or body, right? right? Like a politician can dictate that to you, but you can't tell the politician the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it means doesn't mean without rules, though. We can have rules, yeah, yeah. right? But rules that you give explicit consent to, right? right. Wow, okay. Right. That's, yeah, not what yeah. I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like anarchy of course. And then just like, right, I mean, of course, government wants you to think the other way because right, they want right. you to say that we're a savior from the boogeyman, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're the boogeyman themselves, right? So, uh -huh. yeah, they have to change the language. They have to change uh, a lot of the terms and they can never give you really good definitions for it. Right. Um, wow. They'll tell you, like, the social contract is like, well, show me the contract. I've never seen it. I've never signed <laughs> it, right? I was like, oh, but, but, but it's a theory. So I was like, well, show it to me. Yeah. They can't. But you could show me a real contract, right, with real services that do value your consent, right? And if you say, you know what, I don't want to deal with you, Netflix, like a couple of years ago, they raised the prices overnight, and people are like, cancel and subscribe, I'm going to Hulu, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry, but, you know, but you can cancel. You can re you can uh, remove yourself from any harmful uh, relationships, right? right. Um, 
but, you, but government won't let you separate from them. That's the abusive relationship that I find to be intolerable, right? Um, so yeah, anarchy. So uh, okay. <laughs> very good, very quick. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're part of a group called Liberty RBA. We have over 100 members now. A lot of families, children, uh, a lot of BCU students as well, and just trying to, to to grow this out. We're on our fourth year now, growing with that, and we do like a lot of like monthly gatherings, weekly discussions. Um, I have some flyers. You guys are interested? Here we go. Thank you. I'm very much interested. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, well, <laughs> you guys are very spot on about this. Yeah, that's great. What are you guys studying? Uh, I'm a music major. Music major, nice. I play trumpet in uh, high school, marching band. I was sociology. Sociology. Like, I don't know. It's right. Kind of yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Blame it on the government, right? right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, yeah. Get You'll get there. Ask me in like a few weeks. Right. <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much for uh, for thank coming by. Yeah, I'm Cal. Thank you. Delvita. Delvita. Yeah. Pleasure, pleasure. Abby. Abby. Pleasure, Abby. Pleasure. Yeah, it was really nice you to meet you. You guys take good care. Yeah.